Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Deep Prep. Tonight we're going to be making a Spanish rice dish called paella. So if you guys are ready, let's go ahead and get started. We've got some head-on white shrimp. Got some mussels and clams. Spanish chorizo, man. One yellow onion. Fava beans. A red bell pepper. A lemon. We don't need stickers on Deep Prep. Some garlic. Some padron peppers. Valencia rice. Really expensive saffron. And smoked paprika. I'm just gonna dice up this onion. We're gonna julienne this red pepper. We're gonna use the cleaver and I'm gonna show you a good trick to get garlic super fast. So first we're gonna just give it a little pound with the cleaver. Take the skin off. And now we're not even gonna chop this garlic. We're just gonna whack it. And now it's chopped. Next up we got our fava beans. Now the best way to get into a fava bean is by tearing it open and pop it out. Now the fava bean is actually inside this shell. So if I were to try to peel this off now, it's really hard and we're gonna beat up the bean quite a bit. We don't wanna do that. So what we're gonna do is blanch it. All right, so we're gonna take our fava beans and we've got our blanching water and that's boiling. And all we're gonna do is drop those in for about a minute. All we're looking to do is loosen up those skins, scoop out our fava beans, put them right into this ice cold water so they don't overcook. All right, so now that we've got our fava beans blanched, take your fingernail, rip off the top and push them out. Super easy. And you can tell you've done a good job blanching if they stay that nice bright green color. If they're the same color as the skin, that means you've overcooked them. They should be nice and firm. It's part of their appeal. Get it? Peel the bean? Because it's appealing? That's stupid. Okay, so we got our chicken stock in our pot and we want to make sure that it's hot. Not boiling, but not cold. Because if we start adding cold stock into our hot rice, then that rice is going to seize up and it's not going to absorb any of that flavor. All right guys, so we got our pan here. We've got it turned up to medium high and we're gonna add a bit of olive oil into the pan, about a teaspoon. We're gonna add our chorizo in here. Yeah, make sure it's sizzling. You gotta hear that sizzle and know your pan's hot enough. And you can break this up as finely as you want or leave it chunky. I like to break it up quite a bit so that uh, I get a little bite of chorizo in every bite. Okay, so our chorizo is nice and browned up. We are going to add our onions and red bell peppers. And we don't have to cook these for long. We're just looking for them to get kind of translucent on the onions and the peppers to become a little bit tender. All right, so now we're gonna throw in our crushed garlic. Mix it in really well so everything's getting evenly cooked. Next, we're gonna add the rice and we're gonna toast it in all that oil that came out of the chorizo. That's about a cup and a quarter. Some of the kernels are starting to pick up some color. It's time to start adding our stock. And we're just gonna add this stock in a ladle at a time. You just wanna keep adding more as the liquid evaporates and the rice absorbs the liquid. So now at this point, we're gonna add in a big old pinch of this Spanish saffron. Now keep in mind that saffron is really, really flavorful. And it's also really hard to get out of this little jar. Like stupid hard. That's stupid how hard that is to get out. All we're really trying to do with the saffron is to get it to steep, almost like a tea leaf. So it's gonna leach out all that color, that deep red color, and it's actually gonna turn our rice yellow. And I can already smell it. It's filling up my whole kitchen with that aromatic saffron smell and it's delicious. So now at this point, I'm gonna add a big old pinch of that smoked paprika. Smoked paprika. Can I say that word? So we wanna just keep moving this rice around so it's evenly cooked and it doesn't start sticking to the bottom yet because we're gonna leave that for the final stage of cooking when we're developing our socarrat. I'm gonna throw this lid on so all that moisture is not evaporating out of there. And I'm gonna keep going back to it and stirring it every couple minutes, making sure that's not sticking to the bottom. Okay, so our rice is very close to being done. This is the final stage where we're gonna squeeze some of this lemon juice in there, probably about two tablespoons. All right, so now we've got our shrimp and our mussels and our clams. And first we're gonna add the shrimp because they take the longest to cook. So we're gonna give that just a few minutes and let the bodies of the shrimp cook. They've been mostly cooked on one side. I'm gonna flip them over. And now we're gonna add our shellfish. If you've got a mussel that's hanging out open like this and you give him a little flick to wake him up and he doesn't close up, he's dead. Don't eat him, you'll get sick. They'll be throwing up all night. Gross. All right, so what we're doing now is we're just gonna arrange these shellfish inside of here. And as they pop open, all those juices are gonna be running out of them. All right, so it looks like all of our clams and our mussels have popped open. Ooh, now that's paella. And we're ready to finish it with the garnish. So these are padron peppers. The way to cook these peppers is with quite a bit of olive oil. And you wanna make sure that your pan is smoking hot. Throw the peppers in. And you wanna put a bunch of salt on there. And we're just looking to blister these peppers up. Now we're gonna take our padron peppers and we're gonna garnish our dish with them. 
And if you get one of those spicy ones, you're probably gonna need some horchata. Now, usually Spanish paella has the addition of peas, but we've used the fava beans that we found at the market today, and we're gonna add those in. And the last thing we're gonna do is squeeze in some lemon to give it some nice acid right at the end. Now it's time to taste. Some of these clams in here with the rice and the fava bean. Mm. The rice is perfectly cooked. You can taste the saffron. All the juices from the seafood have dripped down into the rice. Mm. The chorizo really gives it a nice kick. Now this is something that you can do for a party in big batches or you can do just for two. But paella is meant to be shared. Enjoy. And we drink fancy water. Mm -hmm. 